Do you know what a noodle board is? I didn't, but I got a lot of requests to make a noodle board. It's just a stove cover. And we made this one in minutes and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're making noodle boards. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We just needed some noodles and some glue. <laughs> He's been ready for that joke. <laughs> Thanks for playing along, Kim. <laughs> I had to tell Garrett what a noodle board actually was. It is a requested project. It's been requested for a while now, and it's been on the back burner of projects to do. Pun intended. Oh. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Finally, he says, because it was brought up again this week, and then so, and Garrett said, what is a noodle board anyway? <laughs> I had no idea what a noodle board was, so I did not want to make a noodle board. Yeah, I had really, no interest yes. in making whatever a noodle board was. That's why was. it kept rolling to the back of the project list, is because he didn't, he was like, I don't, noodle board, no, moving on. What else do we want to make? <laughs> Stove cover, though. Totally in. I'm totally in on a stove cover. <laughs> so that's what a noodle board is. It's also known as a stove cover. And we're making this right now and during this Christmas season for a couple of reasons. One, I think it would make a really great personalized gift. Mm -hmm. You'll see how quick and easy this project is. So, so it's a great easy. gift idea. It's also a great idea to bring to a craft show and sell as a gift. So you can personalize these. You can take orders. You can just put monograms on them or you know, you can put pretty much anything on them. There's lots of funny sayings for oh, yeah. them. So you can just bring a bunch of pre-made ones and sell them right at your craft shows or farmer's markets. So that's hot. why we're making it now. Yes. It's a hot item for the top of your stove. <laughs> well, oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, <laughs> well, the other great thing is the use of a noodle board. It can be used as a serving tray. Mm. It can be used as a charcuterie board. And we all know the charcuterie boards are so hot right now. So it is, a, again, it goes along with a great gift because it's a serving tray um, for lots of different things. Yeah, I really gotta show you. Yeah. I'm envisioning you what the serving tray looks like. I was in, I saw it. Could I you saw see me holding All the it? meats and cheeses, <laughs> yeah, I saw the spread. <laughs> Now I'm hungry. <laughs> Step one, for real, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed a one by six by 10. It was a long one. Then we needed to find a good one by four by eight. Kim was very particular. Particular, these things had chunks taken out of them. Yeah, they were pretty bad. <laughs> then we also needed some glue, some brad nails. And two handles. Now. You can get some cabinet pulls, but you'll have to be careful because you want to make a long enough screw to screw in from the bottom. Cabinet pulls require that screw from the bottom. But we got these handles over in the fence section, so we'll just be able to screw it in right from the top. They look okay. They, look pretty, for they you. look pretty beefy. They look rustic. Yeah, I like them. No actual pasta included. <laughs> no actual pasta needed in your noodle board. Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. We're gonna take the 10 foot one by six and we're gonna cut that into four equal sections. That's about 30 inches. 30 inches times four is 120, but you have to account for that one eighth inch blade. So all of our boards are gonna be about 29 and seven eighths. It's very precise. <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna cut the one by four down into two 22 inch sections. And we're gonna make all of these cuts with my pocket saw. <laughs> Now we're gonna assemble it. We're gonna bring it all together with some glue and some one and a quarter inch finishing nails. First, we're gonna line everything up. Line the boards up. Now we're gonna clamp them together. We're not gonna glue them together. We're just gonna clamp them together. Hold them in place until we're ready to glue and, and nail them. You probably want them to go this way because you're going to put that yeah. end board. I'm going to use a hammer just to tap everything into place. Make sure everything's lined up. That's pretty good. All right, all right, all right, all right. 
<laughs> Put a little glue. You want to add the glue? Yes, and I, I have a correction. Little... Hopefully he's already corrected this in the display at the beginning of the video. This is a one by three, not a one by four. I told him it was a one by four, but I was wrong. Faulty information. Yes. <laughs> All right, a little bit of glue. Not gonna get crazy because we're gonna stain it next. And if uh, the glue gets on the wood, it won't, it won't yeah. hold the stain. It won't take the stain, it'll look odd. And these are some premium boards that we have for these edges here. Um, this one by three, because well, as you saw in the previous section, I couldn't find a one by three common board that wasn't beat all the way up. So this doesn't even matter if you put it up or down because it's beautiful on either side. There we go. All right, should I clamp it and then flip it or just try to hit it from underneath? I think I you should clamp, clamp it. and flip it. Yeah. All right, here's your clamp. Oh. More clamping. You got the clamps? I got the clamps. All right, we'll clamp Oops. it in a similar area. I Sorry. clamped it and then slid it. All right, clamp them. Oh, mine did too. Oop. Oh my gosh, I really slid it that time I, draw, I hit it. Oh my goodness, I'm making a mess. Oh gosh, Kimberly, what's happening? Ugh, every time I clamp it, it slides. This is the worst clamp. Want me to do it? Want yeah. Me to come over there? Yeah. Seriously, because it just keeps sliding. No, that's not like a good idea. See? All right, that's all right. That's okay. There you go. Let's get it back in place. Let's flip it. Let's just flip it. Gentle, gentle. All right, mine's pretty lined up, right? Mm-hmm. Yours are pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna sand it here in a minute. Yes. Now we're just gonna hit it with a one and a quarter inch brad. The nail, not the guy. <laughs> I'm gonna put like two or three in each board all the way down. I think we can remove the clamps now. Bam. I don't see any glue squeeze. That's good. That's good. Step four. And now we're gonna give it a little sand. A little sanding. Was it sand on, sand off? It was wax was on. Was it and sand wax the floor? On. Was it sand the floor? That's what we're doing. <laughs> we're sanding the noodle board. Same thing as sanding the floor. These boards are really nice quality, so they don't need much sanding. I think I'm gonna just use some 120 on here and I'm just going to smooth out some of these knots a little bit and then maybe hit these corners a little. I'm not, you could put 80 grit on here and round these corners a little, um, but I don't think it needs it. I like I it just, just the way it is. I think you just need to knock off where the cuts are. Yes. Wherever those little burrs and stuff are, knock yes. those off. Just the sharp edges here. Yeah, I think I'm that's, just gonna hit them a little bit. That's all we're looking at. Oh, where's our masks? <laughs> Step five. Now we're gonna give it some color. We have this ebony stain. It's dark and we're gonna use these rags and we're gonna stain it. It's gonna look dark. Yeah. It's very dark. He's, he's, this is like black. It is. It's, it's, black. it's a black stain. I've not used a black stain before. Garrett is very hesitant. I am. But I think it's gonna look cool in our kitchen because our kitchen counter is black and white granite and gray and white. And so I think this is kinda gonna go with it. Yeah, I think it'll go with it. I'm just, that's dark. All right, we're going in. Man, how'd it get through my glove? Look <laughs> at your one finger. <laughs> it like soaked through my glove. 
I'm laughing. I hope I'm laughing. Yeah, you're laughing. You haven't taken your gloves off yet. Step six. Clear coat. Nice. We're going to put some of this polyacrylic down to protect it and so that it's a lot easier to add the vinyl at the end. Yes. The vinyl for stencil or paint. Yes. Either way, it won't stick as well to the stain as it will a little bit of this clear coat. So might as well take five minutes, throw some clear coat on it. You, you know, that's my motto. Five minutes to clear coat? Five minutes to clear coat. That's, I hear you say that one all the time. All the time, it's like, <laughs> it's like a daily thing. Step seven. Now we're gonna add the handles. We're gonna make it so you can pick it up and carry it around town. Well, it's a serving tray, so you're gonna have to. Yeah, you need to carry it here, carry it there. So we just have these little fence poles, and we're gonna use the hardware that it came with. Yeah, it says door pole, uh, five and three pole. quarter inches. This bag is kicking my butt. I use scissors. I don't need scissors. <laughs> I'm just gonna line it up with that center board where the boards meet. Right, so there's a center seam here, so it should be really easy to just eyeball the middle of the handle. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. All right, and now we can carry it around. Step eight, and now we add the accents. We're really just adding some vinyl to the to the top of it. This is where you can really add that personalization. So you can add a monogram, you can add last names, but for ours, we're using a generic design that my daughter picked out. It has the cow, pig, chicken on it. It's a little farmhouse design, so we're gonna add that to our noodle board. Now you can really add the accents or designs anyway. You can add permanent vinyl like we're doing today. You can paint it on using a stencil. You can even engrave it. You can even use the engraving using that ammonium chloride. Okay, we're gonna use our Cricut Maker 3 to cut our design using permanent vinyl. Once it cuts, we'll weed our image. We'll add our transfer tape. Our decal's cut, we have our transfer tape on. I'm gonna find the center of our decal just by folding this transfer, this, well, our smart vinyl or our backing. If you just had transfer tape, you can do this too. And just fold it right in half just to find the center. Give it a now pinch. I have a little, yeah, little creases that kind of show me where the center of our image is. And now we need to find the center of our board. What are we at? 25 and a half, 25, so 12 and a half. Because this top board is raised just slightly and the decal goes over that and leaves kind of a a raised spot, we're gonna cut the decal and make sure that both pieces adhere 100%. All right, looks good. All right, show them what you're working with. Wow. What'd you guys think? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Pretty easy, huh? That was it. That was all that was to it. You I mean, just... like, made in minutes. I think letting the stain dry was the longest part. That and the polycrylic, yes. Yeah, that, that yes. was literally the longest part. Otherwise, you can't tell those middle boards aren't glued together. I don't think you need it. I think the sides being glued and tacked together with the finishing nails 
was fine. And you know, we would just be getting faster the more we make. Right, if you were to make a bunch of these at one time, the efficiencies you would gain from doing multiples. I wonder if we can bring the uh, Cricut Maker to the craft fair and personalize on spot. Is that too much? Yeah. Is no, that too much? I don't know. I mean, I think I you know. can try it. I've seen people do it, so. Really? If they bring yeah. it to the spot and do it on the spot? What do you guys think? Do you think uh, people would enjoy customization on the spot? I mean, I guess we really could just do the vinyl on on site. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the, these would be ready to go. Yeah, do a bunch of these and just have like a namespace ready to go. Yeah, that'll work. What do you guys think? Will it work? Will you guys make your own? We've had a lot of comments asking to make these. So uh, are you gonna make one now? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, we're about out of time. So if you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. Now I'm going to balance it for real. I was just waiting. I just phoned in the last part to get to the balance. Ooh. Ooh, it's very substantial. It's a lot heavier than it looks. <laughs> I could definitely see making noodles on this. But it's, I mean, it's not that heavy. You can carry it around. No, I was so. just saying, substantial. Like, I would feel comfortable carrying heavy stuff on that. I think you could serve your little popcorn and all its fixings on it, take it over to the sofa. Isn't that fun? That is so fun. <laughs>